There are two divided camps between the developed world and the developing world. And the principle of common but differentiated responsibility is in place. And in this context, they are not bearing the same responsibility, but there is the principle of equity. And based upon the equity principle, proportionate responsibility should be born. At the current moment, the division is bipolar, developed versus developing nations. But what should the categorization be in the future in order to achieve the equity principle? And he's going to present his ideas to us of post Durban categorization. So we are going to be talking about after Durban. Nothing has been decided. The major presumption is the temperature only to rise to by two degrees at the most, but the current initiatives will not take us there. What needs to be done? What would be the pathway towards that goal? And that's the subject that we will be talking about in this session. And after the plenary is completed in the following session, there will be a session focusing on national initiatives taken by various countries. Without further ado, I would like to call upon Dr. Yung Wu Park for his presentation. You have the CV. So please take a look at the CV. He is Regional Director and Representative for Asia and the Pacific of the United Nations Environmental Program. Bridging Emission Gap is the title of his presentation. I mentioned that there is this emission gap and if nothing is done, if things are left untouched, the temperature will rise by more than two degrees. But last November, UNEP had published a report. And based upon the report, Dr. Park will give us a presentation. The floor is yours. Thank you, Morishima Sensei, and um, your distinguished participants and experts and their colleagues. Apologies for the, the late coming late here, and it was uh, no excuse. And as um, moderator uh, Morishima Sensei mentioned, what I would like to um, uh, share with you is just uh, not my own study. It is the uh, the study done by uh, UNEP, along with other the experts and uh, institutions on emission gap. So I will just briefly share with you the findings of these um, the studies. And in conclusion, the main, um, although there is a many technical stuff, conclusion is that can we reduce the gap, bridge the gap? Answer is yes. And also uh, the, the, okay, so what do we need? Do we need um, additional fundings and uh, new technologies and methods and so on? And the answer is even without new technologies and uh, additional uh, the financing, it can be done. So I think in conclusion, it is, do we have a will and commitment? I think that's more important. And although if we have additional funds and uh, uh, more advanced technologies, new technologies, and innovative technologies, then we could achieve more. But at least with what we have, with what we have, we can fill the gap and bridge the gap. I think that is the, uh, the message of uh, this report. And also, I will just briefly, if time allows, uh, touch upon the 
Climate and Clean Air Coalition, which deals with the short-lived um, climate pollutants, such as black carbons and uh, HFCs and, and so on, and which will be uh, discussed by uh, my colleagues. And but if since we UNEP has been working on this and uh, initiating this and, and uh, taking the role, secretariat role on this, uh, we. I will just briefly mention about this without any uh, technical uh, mentioning of the technical side of it. Okay, as we all know, Bali plan, action plan uh, delivered in COP13 and uh, Copenhagen Accord recognize the need to keep temperature below two degrees Celsius and its uh, associated uh, reduction required as uh, suggested by the IPCC first report. And also Cancun agreement to further strengthen this and uh, Durban has decided and established process to raise the level of ambition to keep temperature below 2 degree. Durban has also uh, launched a plan on enhancing uh, mitigation ambition to identify and to explore options for a range of actions that can close the <coughs> emission emission gap. And the uh, work has just begun in Bonn. And uh, during its, um, the last negotiation session, session and uh, it will uh, continue in Bangkok in August and during uh, intersessional uh, negotiating, uh, negotiation meetings. And one of the findings the discussions and decisions on the two tracks and the future architecture of climate regime on the Durban platform are interconnected and uh, the complex. For example, uh, length of second commitment period of Kyoto Protocol, the five years or more, and voluntary target on the convention track from now to uh, 2020 are connected to pick as well as legal aspects. And um, as you can see from the, uh, the PowerPoint, and also the Green Climate Fund, I think there are many more like uh, supporting actions under Durban platform for future action through a Green Climate Fund. The emission gap report, it was the 30 leading scientists and the research centers contributed to this uh, assessment report and uh, convened by the UNEP. And the assessment in the report addresses four main questions. First, what 2020 emission levels are consistent with the two degrees Celsius and 1.5 Celsius limits for, and uh, what are the expected global emission in 2020? And how big is the emission gap? And how can the gap be reduced? And the uh, more detailed information, you can find it from the website. And then what are we aiming for? As we know, the level of human-induced global warming is primarily determined by the cumulative emissions over time, and that is when emissions the peaks at what level and how fast they decline thereafter. And so the studies show that there is a trade-off between the timing of the peak and the rate of decrease in emissions afterwards. The sooner and the lower the peak, the slower the rate of uh, decreases can be afterwards. And consequently, the longer the peak is delayed and the higher it is, the faster emissions must decline afterwards. 